first qualifying session of the Gen 3 era imminent here in Mexico City. Well, seismic changes happening in season nine, including the fact that we're now going to be seeing flashes of papaya up and down the pit lane in the form of Neil McLaren. They are new team to Formula E this season. They've signed rookie driver Jake Hughes and there is a return of Rene Rask. Jake Hughes on his debut coming down into turn one. We've had one debut pole sitter before, which was Alex Lynn in New York City at the end of season three. Season three, yeah, the penultimate race of season three. And the benchmark time that Hughes sets is a 12.788. That's a rapid lap from Jake Hughes, but Tickton is closing in on him. Less than two tenths of a second away. Alex Wee watching on, Tickton across the line. Hughes is through by just over a tenth. Jake Hughes, I mean, where to start? This weekend is going from strength to strength for you. I mean, starting from P3 on the grid, did you expect that? Um, I don't know if I'd go as fast as I, I expected it, probably definitely not, but I think the, the sort of general pace we've had since Valencia and then in free practices here has been pretty strong. So I was uh, targeting the jewels before the session. I thought that was, um, you know, a, a where our pace sort of lay um, and then obviously to get through into the semi-finals up against Jake was uh, already a good positive and a little bit disappointed didn't quite have enough at the end I just lost it all in the last corner really um, but yes decent start we're in position new era of Formula E about to get underway brand new car brand new season Degrassi's on pole all five lights are on and we go green in Mexico City it's a decent getaway from Degrassi it's a very good start from Jake Hughes Jake Hughes in the orange McLaren to the outside of turn one. Can't quite do it. Sasha Fenestrand is going full attack into the first corner. And he's got ahead of Sebastian Buemi. There's the view back from Jake Hughes in third place, making his Formula E debut, the 28-year-old from Birmingham. Race winner in Formula 3, raced in Formula 2 as well. Never really with a sort of big hitter team. And he's been very, very impressive on his debut weekend here in Formula E. He was the Mercedes EQ development driver last season when they won the championship. Berline's really, really close here. How difficult is it to keep managing your targets and keep, you know, doing what you need to with the energy when you have someone trying to overtake you? Very difficult, and these drivers have an energy bar that's constantly moving through the lap. Um, and you want to get that towards the middle as you cross the finish line, hitting your, your energy targets, but say you're defending from the car behind, you're going to want to get that energy back in the tank um, at some point before the lap ends or else your, your race strategy is going to get a bit slower. This is his Formula E debut and he's running in third place. Very good stuff from Hughes. And here comes Lotterer. Jake Hughes is about to have his first experience of the German man. Here they come down towards the chicane. Just and he's, there's going to be... We look back up at top five again. And Jake Dennis starts Gen 3 of Formula E with a superb dominant win in Mexico City. We're about to get going for the second qualifying session of the season, round two of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. First up, it's semi-final number one, Jake Hughes versus Dan Tictum. Hughes beat Tictum in the quarterfinals in Mexico City, but they're both looking for their first front row start here through turn one. Who gets the early advantage? Oh. It's Hughes by 200 oh. Hughes hits the wall on the inside, manages to keep it going, but we always say there's a paper's width between them and the wall. There was the advertising papers with there, and that was it. And that might have cost him a bit of time. Tickton's two tenths ahead now. Hughes into the final corner. Cuts the timing beam. It's a 9.779. Tickton's still ahead as it stands. Oh, it's a oh! big slide! Hughes He's wins! Done it. Hughes wins! He lost it all in the final corner. Tickton slides it away at the final turn. <laughs> Right, second on the grid, Jake Hughes, still his best ever qualifying result. Jake Hughes, another phenomenal performance, stepping up from P3 into P2 this time round. Uh, losing out though to season two champion Sebastian Webby, not bad. 
Yeah, I've never disliked Seb more than I do right now. <laughs> um, no, I mean, top job from him. He was quick all, all day, I think. Rene Rastat's fifth on the grid. He was very pleased with his qualifying performance. Second on the grid is Jake Hughes, who qualified third last time out. The first of two races this weekend in Diria, about to get underway. The next one coming up in 24 hours' time. All five lights are on. And we go green in Diria. Oh, it's a reasonable start from Hughes. boemi has got a lot of wheel spin. And Jake Hughes in the McLaren on the left-hand side. Tictum's on the attack. Tictum right to the inside. Oh, Evans goes in and hits the side of Rene Rast. They all run wide. The Mahindras are trying to creep around. And there's a little bit of a collision at the back. So those McLarens are struggling a little in the race here in a way that they didn't really in Mexico City. Struggling is strong. They're running in fifth and seventh, but slithering back a tiny bit. Here's a look at the results. Pascal Verlein taking the win. Rene Rast in fifth for the Neon McLaren team. Eighth is Jake Hughes. So here we go. Quarterfinals about to get underway. Dennis against Hughes. Verlein versus Rast. Both McLarens through to the duels, through the final corner for Dennis. And it's a 1 minute 9.198. That's quicker than Van Dorn's lap. But I don't think it's going to be quicker than Hughes's. The gap grows again to a little just over three tenths of a second. Out across the line. And it is Hughes who is quickest. This guy can qualify. Yeah, he's so consistent. Just never uh, making any mistakes, at least so far here this season. Here we go then. Pascal Verlein up against Rene Rast. Rast is still ahead by three hundredths. How good was the chicane? Pretty good. Pretty good, gaps up to over a tenth here. Rene Rast in the McLaren, Ian James, eyes wide, Rast faster. Both McLarens through into the quarterfinals. Through the final corner. It's Hughes by a quarter of a second. Jake Hughes is into the final for the second time this weekend in Diria. Improved his lap again, a 108.6, so a couple tenths quicker than than he previously went. He's never started on the front row in Formula E, and he won't today. It won't be a front row lockout for McLaren. So we're into the final. Hughes beating Buemi, Evans beating Rast. Rast was quicker than Buemi though, so Rast will be third on the grid, but it'll be either Mitch Evans or Jake Hughes, who will be on pole position for the third round of the championship later on. Here's Hughes now starting his lap into turn one. Just both leaning on it, aren't they? Five hundredths the margin at the moment. Oh, oh the gap's it's closing down again. Seven thousandths of a second. It all comes down to the final corner in the battle for pole. And it's Hughes. He's taking it. Hughes finds a tenth of a second in the final turn, and for the first time, we'll start on pole position in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Rene Rast delighted for his young teammate. Gary Paffitt in there, Franco Chiacchetti, Albert Lau high-fiving everybody. And Jake Hughes will be on pole for the Diria E Prix. Yes, thanks guys. Thank you so much. Anyway, full focus on the race. Enjoy it for 10 minutes and then we'll focus. And look at this, this is Rene Rast's reaction. What a lovely, he's a lovely man, Rene Rast. And really happy for his young teammate. Oh, I'm buzzing, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm still trying to calm down. Um, yeah, like P3 in Mexico, P2 yesterday, P1 today is a nice trend. So we were sort of joking about it yesterday and this morning, but to actually achieve it in my third third race in Formula E is pretty special. And, but all the credit goes to the team, you know. I've been a part of this team for two or three years now and, and they've prepared me as well as I think any rookie's ever been. So that's a credit to them. Round three of the championship. Hughes on pole, Evans alongside him. All five lights are on. We go green in Diria. It's a reasonable start from Hughes. Evans is coming at him, and Evans is going to get him into turn one. Evans, can he take the lead of the e -Prix? He can. From the dirty side of the grid, Mitch Evans has taken the lead. There's a bit of contact with Sam Bird into the back of Eduardo Mortara, coming into the second part of the chicane. Everyone else makes it safely through. Lap 11 of 39. Rast leading. Evans in second. Third. Fourth is Pascal Verlein. Rast activates attack and he's going to come out ahead of Evans. Rast has leapfrogged Evans. 
Rene Rast takes the lead of the E Prix. He goes for a two minutes of attack mode, so he'll have 50 kilowatts extra power for the next two minutes. And that has worked very, very nicely for Rene Rast. Here comes Bird again on the back of Rast. This time he's, oh, he's a bit too far back. He's making it hard on him. He's not going to give up that position. Can Rene Rast hold on for a podium finish? This is Bird's opportunity for third place. Sends it. He's not quite close enough. Oh, he's, he's nudged him. A little bit of a nudge, I think. And Rast holds on. But can Bird get it to the final corner? Verline wins a game, takes the lead of the championship, and third is Rene Rast. The team deserved it. They had put so much hard work into this. And, you know, we were executing so well the whole weekend. It feels like a victory, and I cannot thank the boys and girls enough at Neil McLaren. They did an awesome job, and uh, it's really a lot of fun, you know, working with them. And, uh, yeah, very happy. So it's time for qualifying in Hyderabad. Very much looking forward to this. A really entertaining brand new street circuit. The first Formula E race in India, the first World Championship race in India for a decade. Now here's Jake Hughes, fastest in the middle sector and quickest, a 1 minute 14.1. So Jake Hughes, for the third consecutive race, is quickest in qualifying Group A. Although Hughes is under investigation for being under the minimum pit stop time. Jake Hughes cancelled two best lap times for not respecting the minimum pit stop time. We messed up as a team. Um, there's a, a rule which says there's a, a minimum pit stop time. Um, we didn't adhere to that today. Uh, we need to understand why. Um, but it means that his two fastest lap times have been deleted and that's obviously going to be a, uh, a blow from a qualifying perspective. Uh, we need to regroup and see what we can do from a strategy perspective now from towards the back of the grid. Right, here comes Rene Rast out across the line in the McLaren. This is his push lap. His final lap, and uh, he's been in the duels the last two races. Keep an eye on those right-hand tyres. Nowhere near track limits, Rene Rass. Lovely stuff from the German as he comes down now towards the hairpin at turn three at Lumbini Park. Oh, that was good. That, I, I thought the line he picked through there was very, very good. We want to be seeing him up to the final chicane. If he can hook the curb up well at the apex of 17, and then get a tidy end to this lap, I think this could be an improvement in the final sector. Checker flag is out, so these will be the final lap times coming in. Rast the first across the line, he goes quickest, only by four thousandths of a second, a 14.091. Bottom eight, that's P1. P1, well done. Nice, nice. Good job, boys. So both McLaren drivers topping their groups in qualifying. Now, admittedly, Hughes' lap times got deleted, so not really true, but they've got a lot of pace over one lap, McLaren. Ah, so Ras and Mortara have had their quarter-final lap times deleted for track limits. Round four of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship is the 2023 Greenco Hyderabad E Prix. For the first time, we go green in Hyderabad, and Evans is straight across to try and chop off the front of Jean-Eric Verne, and I think he's managed to get in there. Buemi looking to the inside in the green in vision. Onto the brakes, into the right-hander. Everybody at the front safely through. Oh. The safety car deployed is Jake Hughes. Jake Hughes, damage on the front, has come to a halt on the exit of the hairpin. And Jake Hughes, after a strong start to the season, is out. Oh, oh into the back. Rast into the back of Dennis. Rast into the back of Dennis at the hairpin. Hey Papaya fans, well as I'm sure you know by now, it was a tough weekend here in Hyderabad for the Neon McLaren Formula E team. Neither Jake nor Rene finished the race and that means we're going away with no points. Having said that, the pace in quali and race was very encouraging and we're looking forward to redressing the balance back in Cape Town. I know we can count on your support throughout the highs and lows, so we're very much looking forward to it going forward. We'll see you then. Here we go then, it's time for qualifying for the first ever Cape Town e -Prix. Here comes Hughes now, across the line. As I say, quickest in the qualifying groups. Last time out. Oh, that was lovely. Here comes Rene Rast. The German in the McLaren goes fastest, the 1 minute 8.844. 
Everyone's been talking about how daunting this track is, particularly during qualifying. How much is that going to be playing on your mind during the course of the race and how hard can you push? Yeah, in the race, obviously with energy management, uh, we're not pushing that hard anymore. But qualify, we know that it's uh, all about one tenth or half a tenth, so we try to extract everything. In the race, it should be a bit calmer, but I mean, saying that, looking to India, we saw what happened there, so a lot of things can happen. Um, I'm starting uh, you know, in the top 10, which is always good, so hopefully you collect some points today. The race is about to get underway. The fifth round of the championship. All five lights are on. And we go green in Cape Town. Sasha Fenestra is getting a reasonable getaway, and it's a really good start from Cassidy. Nick Cassidy in the green in vision. Gunter sends it to the outside in the blue Maserati MSG. Can he get that stopped? They're still side by side. The fight's on for second place as they come into the left-hander now of turn two. We go on board here. Oh, Rast is looking racy. Right up behind jean Eric Verne. They're, neither of them are in attack mode at the moment, so this is just a pure race. Da Costa wins for Porsche for the first time on the streets of Cape Town. It's fourth for Rene Rast. you got